Hi, how are you? Hi. Hi, Delroy. How are you? You hear me loud and clear? Yes. You hear yes. me loud and clear? Hear loud and clear. All right. Yes. All right. Drum roll. There is only one way we're bringing our co host on every Money Matters Monday. So this is yours. That's protege, right? Oh, yes. That's protege. Oh, yes. All right. Protection. Protection. So you are here tonight to show us how best to protect that wealth. And protege Absolutely. just told us. All right. Definitely. So, Definitely. So welcome. Welcome to the Money Matters family. Welcome to all the persons I am, I am excited to be here. I am honored. I am humbled, you know. I have watched your program over and over, and I, I just I still can't believe I'm here. So thanks for having me, Delroy. <laughs> Thank you, and it's our delight. But you know, you have to let everybody know exactly who you are. Outside of being a florist and entrepreneur, I want you to tell them the whole. See, I give away oh. some of it. Well, I am a real estate agent. I am, I am with Keller Williams Jamaica. I am also a mediator. I am a mother. I am an entrepreneur. I am a community development person. I am everything you can think of, Delroy. I, I don't want more than the seven. I don't want more than the seven. I will take that seven. Mediator. Yes. Mother. Lawyer. Yes. And you never call a lawyer, yes. you know, but it's fine. Real talk. Flores. Yes. And chocolate. Yes. Oh my God. Wow. So you know what it's all about to protect what you have been working so diligently. Most definitely. On. Yes. All right. So we definitely want to know what is estate planning. Just what is it in a nutshell? All right. All right. Estate planning. Let me tell you something. Estate plan is important because your money matters, you know. I am here on your money matters, and that's exactly why estate plan is, is important. Now, a lot of us, we focus on building that wealth, creating that wealth. But what happens should we wake up tomorrow and we can't move, we can't make any decision, or something happens and, we, you know, we pass, what's going to happen to your wealth? This is why estate planning is important, so what is estate planning? A lot of persons, they don't know. So let me just tell you. Estate planning is really putting together all the measures in place to ensure that should you become incapacitated or should you die, we don't want to discuss that topic, but it's, it, 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 yeah. it will happen. Just don't know when. But should that happen, you know, you want to ensure that your assets, your wealth is managed how you want to and by whom you want to. So that's the essence of estate planning. It's, it's not a one document or two documents. It's really yes. tailoring a plan that, that, that meets your need based on what you have, what you have acquired, you understand, to ensure that should you become vulnerable tomorrow or the day after, your, your wealth will be managed in a way that you want, that you're pleased with. So that is really estate planning. So let, let me go further. When we think of estate planning, we are thinking about doing a power, power of attorneys, creating trust, and last but no you want to explain, you want to explain the power of attorney? You want to explain the power of attorney? All, All right. For you to understand the importance of this, we're going to look at estate planning in two stages. First one is, should you become incapacitated, you know? Most of us, we don't really focus on that. We just build, we create. But guess what? Let's say tomorrow you wake up, you can't move. You need an emergency surgery that's going to cost $2 million. And you have an account with $20 million. What's going to happen then? Someone may not be able to access that fund in time, you know. So your $20 million can't save you, going to pass. You understand? So these are the questions that you need to answer when you're, when you're thinking, about, thinking about estate planning. So you're going to create that durable power of attorney that's going to say, 
should I become incapacitated, my, my niece or my daughter, someone you can trust, will have access to this account. They will take care of my medical bills. My, my, my business will, be up, will continue be to, will be operated by so and so. You know, they, will, they will pay these bills from this account etc so that's the importance you need, of your durable you need an attorney you need an attorney to be the power of attorney no man you need someone you can trust you need someone, okay. someone who, is credible, who is credible okay. you understand so it's not when you think when you say a power of attorney it's really a document that's created under seal but it's not really an, an attorney is going to carry out all these activities no it is really someone that you have faith in someone you can trust to carry out all these activities. So that's, that's a very crucial one, and that is something I say don't pass upon because you never know what will happen. Delroy, yeah, tomorrow you might meet in an accident and you can't move. You understand? You will have all this wealth. But by the time it's, you're going to have, let, let, let me show you, tell you something. If something happens to you and you're incapacitated and no one is appointed, you'll have to go to the Supreme Court to get someone appointed. To, to have access to your bank account, et cetera. Because not because your wife or husband, you can, you can walk into the bank and say, look, my husband is sick, so I need to access his account. No, you can't do that. You understand? And you can't make certain medical decisions unless you have that power of attorney or you're appointed guardian by the court. So that's why you need to have this in place. I've heard from time to time that the power of attorney has to be registered or Somebody can just draw up something and just call it a power of attorney or there is some legal... All right. It is, it's, it, all right. It is drafted, signed by you and the person. It is registered. It is stamped by stamp office and then it is oh. registered. You understand? Yes, that's, that's how it's done. RGB, so if it is whether it's dumb tone or Spanish tone, it is registered there. So if it is not stamped, it is, it is basically not valid? No, man, it has to be stamped. You have to pay government fees. No? You can't do anything legal these days without paying your fees. No? You have to pay the government okay. fees. So you're stamped. So guys, is what goes to the government. Guys, the you power cannot of attorney must be stamped. stamped. It has to be. Has if you have a power of attorney yes. and in Pardon your me? position and it is not stamped, run go get it stamped. It has no use if it is not stamped. Stamp and register. Thank you very much. Yes, it must be duly printed. You know, go be, have it done before justice of the peace. Because these are crucial issues that you're dealing with. You, can't, you know, you want to know that it was done properly. You will execute it done in the presence of a JP stamp and then register. And then you just Most put it in a safe place. So they can give it to your pastor, your attorney, or someone you trust won't for you. You understand? Stamped and register. Well, I will never forget this one. It yes. must be stamped and register. Yes. Otherwise, yes. you're not protecting no work. But, exactly. But let me ask a question. So, so why a person should do yes. estate planning? Why, why a person should do it? Because your money matters. <laughs> you have worked so hard to build your estate, to accrue your wealth. You want to ensure that you have a say in how it is managed and taken care of should you become incapacit incapacitated, incapacitated or should you die. You want to have a say in this. So you want... Let, look at this. You might die without a will tomorrow and you're bill, you, you have worked and you have a 20, 30, 50 million dollar estate. You didn't put someone in place or someone in charge. Then, you know, that outside child come in and do all manner of evil with it. In two days, I can, it, it can take you years to build your estate and two days to destroy it. So that's destroy. why it's in place. Estate planning is important. You understand? And it's not just about creating a will, you know, because like I said, you're going to create a number of documents. Some is going to take effect during your lifetime, and some is going to come into effect upon your death, like your will. So during your lifetime, you can, as is your power of attorney, something might happen to you. So that is one. So estate planning is not just creating one document, it's a number of documents. And it's, it's all dependent. It all depends on your circumstances. So for instance, you might want to save money, the estate money, and you might say, look, if I'm supposed to pass, I really don't want my property, my estate to be probated, etc." cetera. So you know what, I have one property, let me just transfer it to my daughter from now. 
that is estate planning. You understand? So it's, a, it's not a one cap fit everybody. It all depends on your needs, your assets, etc. Okay. I, I got a DM. I got a DM asking for you to clarify the difference between um, joint tenancy and tenancy in common as it relates to, because this person is looking about their estate and trying to do this thing with the property and say, they don't want to come in here and ask. They just need me to ask it for them. So yeah. I, I I'm promise. I'm glad they asked that question because it's very important. Before I answer it, I'm going to tell you a short story. I, I, <laughs> someone bought a property. He bought it as joint tenants with his mother. Property valued about $70 million. He bought it with his mother. His mo he died before his mother. So his mother got everything. Now, his mother created a will, leaving his, her, her son in charge. Now, her son is trying to get the, the owner, the one who died, or his son out of the property. So, let's say my father bought a property with my mother. You're probably thinking, look, should I pass? My mother will ensure that my children, they have the benefit of it. But that's not how it yeah. works. His mother got everything, then it went to her estate. And this person who is in charge of her estate is trying to get the son out of the house. So it is important that you understand the concept. So this is it. When you're buying property with another, you will either do so as joint tenants or tenants in common. Joint tenants, it simply means that you own everything together. But should you, should you pass? Well, let me not put it like that. The survivor takes everything. Okay, the survivor, the, survivor takes everything. Everything. So several, the survivor takes everything. So this it simple means that if you leave your, in your will to say that I want to give my daughter my portion of that property, that section will be null and void. No effect because the survivor takes everything. So I always recommend, let's say you're buying property with your sister, your mother, and you have children, you have a wife. I would not recommend you do it as joint tenants because you would want you would want those persons to benefit to have a say to to have an interest in the estate should you pass. You understand? Can, can you repeat? So I can you repeat? Joint. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Joint tenancy. Joint tenancy. Yeah. Most persons who use that would choose joint tenancy or husband and wife because they have the, the kids together. So if anything happened, you know, it will pass to the wife and the wife will ensure that the family is taken care of. But let's say you're buying a property with your sister, your mother, and you have five children, you have a wife. I wouldn't recommend you use joint tenancy because you, you would want those persons to benefit in the estate. All right? So you want to choose that. So that's the difference. Joint tenancy, the survivor takes everything, which means it, it cannot be willed. Even if you put it in your will, that section will be null and void. No effect. As there's, opposed there's to a question. tenants in common. No, there's a question for you, and then you can come back to the tenants in common. You, you mind taking that one? Okay. Hold on. If your wife signs on your accounts, do you still need to do a power of attorney for a to attorney? Yeah. It depends, you know, because it's not just about your account. You might have other, like I said, you don't want, you would, I would still recommend you do a power of attorney because of your account, you would want to say that if something was to happen to me, she can make that medical decision, you know. You might, if you need a blood transfusion, etc., she can make that decision. She will do, you can even say, what is it that she'll do with the money you'll pay? You put that X there, etc. So you you will sell the car. So it goes further than that. It's not, it, 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 it won't just yeah. deal with your bank account. So I would still recommend the power of attorney. I would still recommend the power of attorney. Right. Yes, so it's just that you wouldn't need to include that account in it because it would have already been taken care of. She would have already have access to it. But I'm sure when you sit down with your attorney, you can think that you, you will, he or she will recommend that you include in that co-op attorney. Oh, so those things that you lock away with, 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 with interest already noted and everything, you don't need to include in the power of attorneys. Those things that are left unattached and stuff. Somewhere. Precisely. Yes. 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 Uh, the tenants like in common. The tenants in common. Yes. Repeat that for me. Delroy, I right. hear so, you clearly. Could you yes, repeat it, that for it, me, please? You had explained the joint tenancy which we got. So the tenants in common now on yes. the property. Oh, 
All right, with tenants in common, it simply means that you will you will buy the property, so it will be let's say two persons. You can do it fifty fifties. You can do seventy thirty. However, you want want to share it. You can say ninety five five. Share it how you want to, and then upon your death, you decide who should get it, who should share it to your estate and how. So you can say in your will, I want. 5% of my share to go to my sister, the other 50%, mm -hmm. then whatever is remaining goes to issue, whatever it is. So you can, the essence of it important is that you can, it can be left in your estate. It goes to your estate. You can just decide what happens to it as opposed to when it is joint tenancy. Because I've seen, well, I've seen persons who have, who have owned property as joint tenants and they still create a will leaving their portion to somebody. And then we'll have to say, look, that section is no effect. You can't get it because it's owners ten as joint tenants. So it will have to go to whoever name is on the will. I mean, whoever names is on the title. So that's why it is okay. important that you understand the concept. Because some person, okay. they might not use an attorney or they might do it. The, the purchase in a rush and they just don't understand the concept. But it's, it is important. All right. Mm. Guys, there is a big difference between joint tenancy, tenancy in common, as it relates to your there, estate. There is, there is, there is, no, there is. go back and look at your title. And do exactly, exactly what the title has on it. All right, Daryl, the, Daryl, can you imagine you by investing like fifty million dollars into a hotel with your your brother, your sister? It's a huge investment. Most likely, your intention would be that your family can benefit. But what sure. happens if you pass all it to realize that it was owned as joint tenants? Can you imagine your your brother or your sister getting everything and then your your, your wife or your children not being able to join it or participate or enjoy the benefit of it? That's why it is important. It is important. I, I definitely see the implications of of so so pretty much when when person when person looking about their estate planning, it's probably best then to have an attorney to guide the process. Or yes, it's probably best. And then we look at best. your your situation, your needs, and your your assets, what you have, because the plan that I recommend for Susie, I probably won't recommend it for you because what you want to acquire is different. Some person they want to this, they want to ensure that look, let's look at this. Some persons are married, they are separated, but they are not divorced. They live with someone they want to ensure that person the, the they want they want to ensure that they share in their estate because if you are with someone but you're married and should you pass you know that the wife is going to share in your estate they're going to come in and they'll have majority of your whatever it is that you have so situations like these one person might say look i need to ensure that i put something in place to cover this you know because i don't want that person who is with me who's working hard to build my estate and my wealth. Should I, should I die, they not get anything from my estate. So it all depends on your needs, what you want to acquire. Well, estate planning is more serious than I thought. No, this is no it joke. It is. But regardless of, regardless of your needs, three things I'll always recommend is your power of attorney. I will recommend do uh, getting life insurance because that will provide some funds probate because probate can take about eight months it will take a while so you want your, your family to have some let's say some cash so insurance your insurance policy it provides some liquidity during that period what? so i recommend getting your power of attorney done getting your life insurance and drafting a will so regardless of your situation when it comes to estate planning i will always recommend those three things no, Chantel. I am reading yes. a message that is asking yes. about why insurance is so important in estate planning. I heard you mention. Can you say exactly yes, again? Insurance. Liquidity. It provides liquidity. So I can't. Unfortunately, I can't. See. But let me, let me explain it to you. Let's say you take out life insurance and your past. That can assist with the, the, the funeral the arrangements. And it will provide some money to your family to assist with the, you can start the, the probate process. You can pay up a few debts. That will provide some liquidity during that period. During that period after death and probate, you will have that. So that's why life insurance, that insurance policy is important. 
But my my mind your house an insurance agent and not just a realtor, you know. Mine you know. <laughs> uh, you have to know a little of everything, you know. You you have to be able to get your, your clients, so you have to know a little of everything, you know. And if you if it goes in depth, I say, look here, I'll, I'll call you someone to tell you more. But you have to be able to to guide them. So yes, you have to know but, as much as possible. I'm a strong as advocate. It relates to, like to, as it relates to estate planning, I I know enough to tell you that it is crucial. Well, I'm an advocate for insurance policy. But I have never heard it brought across like this. That look here, you see, it brings you liquidity during the period of debt, so yes, it is less burden on your relatives left behind. Let me tell you, funerals are expensive. It is very expensive, so it helps with that as well, because you will have yes. you will have the beneficiary on on the policy. So once you can provide the death certificate, then the money will be paid out. It doesn't go to your estate. You don't have to wait eight, nine months after to get that money. You understand? You just need to get the death certificate, and then that money will be paid out. So that's why it's important. And it is not money matters that, that said that. You hear it directly from the attorney, right? Directly. And um, I just want to well, welcome... Well, well, well matters. <laughs> well, well, the fixer... The fixer is asking, a, is asking a question. If you have property in Canada and Jamaica, can one will suffice? Mm, I pass that question to you. Yes, man. It can. It can. It can. What will happen is that once the, the will is probated abroad, it can be resealed here. So you have a process called resealing of grants. But that's probably another show. But it can. In short, it can. All right. All right, fixer. Yeah. Welcome to The only thing that will be done is that the, the grant will have to be resealed here. And, and that is okay. just like getting it pro it's like probate. It's like going through the court, getting the court's approval all over again. So yes, you can. You definitely can. So, well, what, what, what is funny then, um, Chantal, from listening, I, I get to understand that. Yes. In any estate planning, there are some persons that are very crucial to the process. Very, oh, yes, some yes. persons. That... All right. And it all depends on the documents that you're drafting. Let's say you're drafting your will. You will have to, you need an executor. And that is someone you can trust, someone who will go through the process. Because a lot of persons, they are, they, they are executors in a will, but they really don't want to do it. You understand? They don't have the patience to go through the process. So you, they say, you know what? When the person dies, choose somebody else. So choose someone who understands the process and who's willing to go through the process to ensure that your wishes... Okay. Th your wishes are carried out. So that's okay. the one person, the executor. Then uh, if you're going to... You need someone for your power of attorney. You need to ensure that if someone is trustworthy. So you need to sit with that person and say, look, I'm going to appoint you in my power of attorney. If something happens, then you will do this. Way. And they should agree to it. So they should be aware of it and be knowledgeable of the process before they are appointed. So you have, then you'll have your banker because, like I said, estate planning, it, 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 what, what, what is it? What, what is planned for Susie might not be for you. So let's say you have an account. You might say, you know what, let me just add my wife to the account. You know, so you have to go into your, the bank and speak with them. You know, you might have to go to your, insur your insurance company, take out your life insurance. So there's so many persons. Of course, you will need your accountant, you know, to work for some figures and say, let me put this here, there, etc. So there are a number of persons, yeah. number of players. But I would recommend you start with your attorney. Because you have to work out the plan and know what the plan is before you know who, who are the players involved. So okay. the attorney will say, okay, do they put a banker to achieve this result? You understand? And then you'll say, okay, I will advise you to get insurance. Go speak with the insurance company. But we will prepare the plan for you and then let it guide you as to who you need to speak with. Well, uh, guys, Chantel is an expert in the whole estate planning. She's telling you live, free advice, because your money matters. You're getting it for free. You know where to find her. You can hook her up on her IG page. Trust me. Your money matters. 
Because, because yes, sometimes we do have a little bit of fluctuation with the internet. You know, we said in the trailer, we said we'll shed some light on this very important matter. But we're shedding more than light. We're giving, we have some serious takeaways tonight. I did not know a will could, could cover both Jamaica and Canada. Or Jamaica and another state. I thought you'd have to get one in Canada. Yeah, man, so, you can, you can come on, well, yeah, man, it can cover a number of countries. I've seen it before. So you just need to, you so put everything that. together. It will be used up and then it, you, you, it comes here and it, it is resealed in the court. And then it is used here. So it can be, it can be. Yes, you can you you can just draft one will. And that the power of attorney must be registered again. That is something again. Yes, man, it must be stamped the, the, and registered. Must be stamped and registered. Yeah, the big distinction between the joint tenancy yes. and the tenancy in common. That's the must. Why? Yes. Yes. Well, you would never believe that on Money Matters Monday. It's 30 minutes. It's actually the end of the show. I know oh, you have not oh, gone I into... I, I, I can't believe it. But, but, but I am telling you, I'm sorry. What we do is that... And, well, I will get back to that. But So you want to leave us, leave us with some takeaways because I am aware that for the persons that it would be included in the planning process, executor, power of attorney, bank accountant, you name it. But just summarize for, for us some of the critical things that really must be done. Sargon, we're actually ending, but welcome to Money Matters Monday. Yeah. yeah. So just back me up on some but of I'll the takeaways. Because the biggest, the biggest one is that because your money matters, estate planning is crucial. So the first thing, go and speak with the attorney, is to devise a plan that works for you. You will have to get your power of attorney done, get your life insurance, and draft your will. You need to decide what happens to your wealth after you pass. Who gets what and what? Who gets what? What happens to your wealth? So your will is important. So get that will done, get your life insurance, and draft your power of attorney. Go speak with an attorney right now about your estate planning. So that is, that is exactly what I will leave with you. Why? We could not ask, we could not ask for anything more from you. We could not. Oh, no. We are so appreciative. Um, Thanks for having me. Ah, er Erlan, Stacey, Sanikari. As I said, we thank you for joining. You have to catch back the replay. We're going to save the live so you can catch it back. And I'd asked the question earlier. Um, yes. Anyone that can tell me how many videos we have on the Know Your Money Matters YouTube channel. I have a, I have, I have a, a, uh, I don't want to show the figure, but I actually have a dividend check that I would have actually signed over to the, to the person that, you know, gave the answer, but nobody gave the answer. So thank you, the fixer. Great show. No, 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 no. You're, you're, you're a co-host. You can't enter. You can't enter at all. So, so you can flip over to the YouTube um, oh, page and you can see oh, some no. of the videos that I do. The next time I ask the question, probably somebody will get this dividend check, right? As I said, all I'd have to do is endorse it over to the person. I will not say, I will not say exactly how much is on it. Wow, right? that's, but that's it was lovely. <laughs> it was a gift tonight. <laughs> you, you so probably you could use it and I, probably I could use it and I an attorney to um to assist them with their estate planning. So why not? No man. That's a no. very good suggestion. Yeah, yeah. Amelia, Amelia That's a very guess good what? Suggestion. You, you come after. You come after. And and I'm going to tell you something. I'm we have seventy five. It, no, it's not 62. It, it's not 62 either. And it's no. actually it's not 75. I think it's Amelia 7592. It's not. Yeah, but it's not. It's actually not 75. Not Seven, 75, 75 is the numbered um, video that actually go on the live. But you have other videos on the YouTube channel. So 
35 no, now, man. Money, money matters. Money matters. Money matters running. Saga, no. 20 no, man. Money matters running every Monday for the last year and feast, man. It could be 20. Somebody's saying 83. Somebody's saying 83. Upstate. Delroy? I'm seeing somebody right. saying 83. Up. No, Saga, no. There's another hunch now, party. <laughs> No, Melissa, not 74. <laughs> um, 95. Someone else is saying ah, 19. I mean, Guess what? Every good thing has to come to an, a break, not an end. We don't, we don't end things. We take a break. So all good things have to come yes. to a break and money matter. We only break until next week, Monday again, when we come live with another interesting and interactive guest co-host. We say thank to Chantal tonight for having us. Go follow our page, look her up. Thanks for having me. Get some information from her. Right? And when you're ready for that estate planning, hook her up. Hook her up. Hook her up. Oh, yeah. Thanks for joining us. Right? 83. Thanks now it's more than. Good night. Nicole, now, it's not 100. You're close. 100. You're close. But we're going, we have to chip out now. 30 minutes gone. Go Chantel. All right. Thanks, guys. So just go I'm follow Chantel. Do my and, get... and I'll come back. I'm gonna do my That's You're not right. qualified for the check though. <laughs> You're not qualified for the check. <laughs> oh. All right. <laughs> thanks, thanks, thanks. Catch up. <laughs> all right, all right. No.